What if every time I won a game of Pokemon Showdown, I had to devolve one of my Pokemon? How many times could I win in a row? And could I reach seven wins, emerging victorious in the final game with a fully devolved team? This is something I've made up called the Devolution Challenge. Here are the rules. After every win, you need to swap out one of your Pokemon for a previous evolution of itself. You cannot change teams, and if you lose, you start over. Seven wins and you've completed the challenge. I'll be doing this challenge in Gen 3 OU, and here's the team I'm going to use. I've selected six Pokemon that I think have usable enough devolutions. Blissey is an obvious choice because Chansey has almost the same stats. Magnemite is still able to trap Skarmory. Haunter is reasonably good with its vast move pool and useful utility options like Destiny Bond. Metang can probably function well enough as a rock resist and explode on things to trade. And Vigoroth, while not excellent, can still be my win condition for the final devolved six. And finally we have Breloom who devolves into Shroomish. Shroomish obviously isn't great but it can at least use Spore to put something to sleep and Leech Seed is very useful as well. Let's get into the first game and see how we do. Game 1 begins with the regular fully evolved team and we've got a pretty good lead matchup here against a Suicune because Slacking can very safely use Return for enormous damage on this incoming Snorlax. I go Gengar on a Snorlax self-destruct, another simple manoeuvre. I taunt this Heracross I actually meant to run Explosion on this Gengar, I forgot to alter the set, but that was alright. We dodged that Mega Horn very fortunately, and take some Rock Slides. I take this opportunity to get Slacking back on the field, because it outruns and can threaten the guy. I Focus Punched expecting a switch out, but they actually went for a Swords Dance there. Uh, same deal if I returned, I suppose. Bit of a weird one. In comes Salamence. I go to Gengar in case of... Earthquake or Brick Break, and we get a simple Revenge KO. Here's Magneton. I, of course, have a Blissey in the back for this. Very simple game one against what looks to be a blue offense with all of our favorite fellows that synergize with Magneton. We take care of this Magneton, and with only a couple Pokemon remaining, it was a pretty simple victory from there. Of course, our team has fully evolved, but now things get tricky, and this is where I decided to devolve my Blissey into a Chansey for the next battle. And let's get into game two. Game two begins, and this is a slightly more awkward lead matchup with Tyranitar. The earthquake is quite obvious here, and there's often switch outs to play around it, as we see here with a switch out to Salamence. But my eyebrow raises once I notice that the enemy is not wearing a leftovers. And my eyebrow raises even further when this Brick Break does a measly 14%. I expected Choice Band Salamence, but it was in fact a mixed Salamence with something other than leftovers could be Black Belt, I've seen that before, or just a simple Lumberry. I get Chansey in, the star of the show, Devolve the Blissey, still honestly almost as good. Doesn't have any special attack though, that's the big downside, you can't run Ice Beam. We pivot Gengar in on this Brick Break, and we're forcing you out with Ice Punch. Turns out you're actually a speedy, mix Salamence with Rock Slide. You get some chip on the way out, well done. In comes Shrek the Swampet. Dare I Will-O-Wisp? Of course. But it was Lumberry Swampert. Folks, that was a curveball. And Will-O-Wisping again is awkward, there's a mischance, dare I do it? I actually go Breloom instead on the Surf. Lumberry expended on this Swampert, so I know I can Spore again, I guess. But it's a Lumberry super fan. I think that Salamence was also Lumberry, it's just one of those Lumberry heads. You see them sometimes, they put Lumberry on everything. And I deduce that this is in fact a speedy mixed tar based on that decision, and my Breloom is slower, so I gotta get out of there. Slacking can of course stomach that hit and follow up with a big Earthquake. Salamence is down. Not as much counterplay to my Earthquake. I have to exit. In comes Chansey, taking a Surf very effectively, with its enormous defensive stats. Breloom dodges a Toxic. We love to see it. We put the Swampert to sleep, that's a huge momentum gain. It doesn't even have leftovers to chip heal up in this position. And we can very easily bring it down closer to the grave. A hidden power goes to finish it off so that we don't miss, of course. And in comes Aerodactyl, this could actually be a threat, but I've got such Pokemon on my team. Look at all my Pokemon that I have. I go Gengar on the Earthquake like a genius, of course. The enemy is about to dodge Will-O-Wisp, I remember this one. But that's okay. It's also a speedier Zapdos than Gengar, which is common. My Gengar's only 308 speed on this team. In comes Chansey to 
Take Thunderbolt. This Zapdos is doing some toxic substitute stuff, bringing Chansey low, but it's all for naught because my Magneton stomachs two Thunderbolts and takes you out with a Thunderbolt of its own. Here's a Blissey from the enemy side. I remember you. I used to have you on my team. Then I devolved into a state of insanity. We toxic the arrow and that basically seals it. We all know what happens here. We KO it with Meteor Mash. Let's get onto the interesting game, game three, where we have to actually devolve something into something bad. And my choice here is Haunter. We've devolved Gengar into Haunter for the next battle. And now the real game begins. This is where things actually get difficult. I have a Haunter on my team, meaning my team is a lot weaker than it once was. Gengar and Haunter, there's a disparity there. Goes to a Skarmory on turn one. Very sensible. I go to my Magneton, as you do. We take this out with a Thunderbolt after a couple of Protects. And here's a Moltres. I Protect and it's revealed to me that this is Fire Blast. That could represent Timid Moltres because Timid Moltres needs a bit more damage. It's Modest Moltres can afford to run Flamethrower for that accuracy. That's good info. It's Protect Fire Blast Moltres, which is a little odd. And my Soft Boiled comes at the exact moment that we need it. Flygon does exist to thwart my Thunder Wave, and this is where things start to get a bit dicey. Because Flygon is a little bit tough for me to break through. I do have HP Ice on my Haunter, but Haunter is easy to stop. It's very frail. I mostly just use it to Destiny Bond stuff. As I said, a Jirachi can easily stop this. Now I'm starting to think this one's rough. If this is sub my Jirachi, I lose on the spot. Almost. Decided to go to Chansey after some thought there. I did think about that one for a bit because sub my Jirachi could have got me. I figured that the team looked like a Superman type of thing. Probably doesn't have sub my Jirachi. It's probably a Wish Protect Jirachi. And I was right, thankfully. We end up getting Breloom in on the Protect turn and get a beautiful Spore, which is going to give me a lot of breathing room this game. I go for a simple Sky Uppercut. I mean, that chip right there on Moltres is not Peanuts. That's going to add up. And this Moltres, I don't think it can fit a raw, so I'm not worried at all about just going straight to Chansey every time on this. This Moltres is not going to be that much of an issue for me. If it had a raw, it could have been, but it doesn't. It has Will-O-Wisp, which alongside Protect exists to stall me, I suppose, but I get the far more crippling Thunder Wave off against the Moltres, and now Moltres is in real shambles. We've got Parachance to contend with, along with Mischance, and speak of the devil, the Fire Blast misses, of course as we expect, and this is a very simple 1v1 with Seismic Toss. I don't know why the enemy's protecting, maybe to try and stall me with, with burn damage, but I can simply heal, and you're losing turns, you're burning daylight, as they say. Another Fire Blast does a bit more, but to what end? Another Protect, you're just allowing me to heal, really. And a simple Seismic Toss finishes that off. We're looking good so far. The Flygon threw me for a loop, the Jirachi had me in shambles a little bit, but that Moltres was achieving very little. Not a good set for the situation. This Gengar Taunt though, denying a Thunder Wave, preventing heals, and stacking up this chip damage with Burn, my chance he's dangerously low all of a sudden. I gotta be careful. I go Magneton on an Ice Punch, which is a interesting click, maybe trying to catch the Breloom potentially come in or something like that. I clicked Toxic thinking Flygon might come in on Thunderbolt, but it was Jirachi actually who I can defeat while it's sleeping. It's Magnet Pulled now. And it does not wake up, fortunately for me. And then that's when the enemy forfeited. I actually think you could have still got me, but suppose you thought otherwise. And with that, we have our third victory in the books. And now this is where things get very difficult. And in this battle, I decided to devolve my Magneton into a Magnemite. This is where things start to get rough because Magnemite is a lot worse than Magneton, but let's give it a go. I put a Quick Claw on it because it doesn't one hit Skarmory with Magnet anyway, and Quick Claw might help me get a fast Thunder Wave against something. So I thought that was slightly more optimal. Let's get into game four. Game four begins, slacking up against Cloyster. And on turn one, I went for a Focus Punch to try to catch you spiking. And indeed, you did. And you're deceased as well. In comes a Breloom to punish my Truant, and just went straight for a Focus Punch, actually. I went to Magnemite to try to catch the uh, Spore and get Sleep Claws up, but of course you Focus Punch. Good move on the Truanting Slacking that could be completely punished. Haunter entry point, though. Doesn't even KO Breloom with HP Ice. Tragic, tragic. And we take the Sleep, so pretty bad in terms of momentum. Uh, you got your Spike up. You did lose your Cloister, but still, I think you're looking pretty good. I go Metagross on the Snorlax. We at least have a solid... Pokemon to handle Snorlax, 
I go for a Meteor Mash here, but I take a big Earthquake, and I'm thinking if there's a Tyranitar in the back, I am pretty screwed, because I'm pretty chipped on this Metagross, and I think a plus one Earthquake will get me from here. And Charizard is another terrible threat, I don't have a Water type on this team, and a Charizard Focus Punch or Beat Up will eat my Chansey alive if it comes to that. I do go to Chansey because I was frightened of, like, Substitute, didn't want to protect again. I double back to slacking on what I thought might be beat up, but this situation is good too. Because we do eliminate Snorlax, but this allows Charizard back in. For rough, it. rough match up here a little bit, and you've punched my Chansey. I'm in a bit of trouble, I'll admit it. I have to admit it. Slacking can enter, at least. We live whatever Charizard does, and I actually made a great play here. I Shadow Balled. I assumed there was a Gengar on the Cloister team, and you would go here if you had it, and I was correct. So that was a good move, but every time this slacking truants, the enemy gets so much out of it. I can go Haunter on this Focus Punch, but we're sleeping, but I miraculously wake up. I get the Thunderbolt crit. Haunter, you have saved me majorly. That was very lucky, I will say, but I'll take it, folks. I'm running Haunter Magnemite here. I need it. I need everything I can get. And that Metagross falls to Thunderbolt. We can get slacking back in to live a hit and... KO Zapdos, but it's down to the wire. What I do here is I go Haunter, sack myself, get a Breloom in, because I'm thinking this is Timid Zapdos, and Timid Zapdos has a chance to kill my Slacking after the spike, so I can deliver hit Spore, increase my chances of win, but Drill Peck means you're slower than Slacking, so we're good either way. We get the return, and there you go. That was a close one, folks. I was, I was sweating a little bit, thought I might have to restart, but no, we got there. With a bit of luck, I'll admit, the crit and the wake up on Haunter, that was a miracle. Thank you uh, to the man upstairs for that one. But we move on, of course. And the next Pokemon that we devolve is Slacking, actually. Slacking is going to become Vigoroth now. I figured that Vigoroth was better than Matang for our next battle. I would have a higher chance of victory. And I switched the leads around. I'm leading with the Breloom. Here we are in game five, and we no longer have a slacking to rely on. Slacking has actually been one of our best Pokemon so far, but now we have a measly Vigoroth in the back. But at least Bagnemite gets the best day of its life. Putting a Scarf to sleep turn one, and the crit, I mean, you were sleeping anyway, I could have two hit you, but hey, I'll take it, folks. This Magnemite is going a long way today. It eliminated Skarmory and paralyzed a Tyranitar. You've just caused big damage to the two top Pokemon in the metagame, Magnemite. You're going to go down in the history books as the best Magnemite ever. Now, this play almost cost me the whole world. I HP ghosted. I did not think in a million years that this Tyranitar would stay in against a Breloom and take a fighting move, but he did. Uh, that threw me for a loop. And I was just shy of carrying with Mash too. I don't know what this set is. I have attack investment of this Metagross, so that's a damn bulky Tyranitar. It was a great start, but I threw it away with a bit of an overprediction. I kind of stand by the play, though. I figured Skarm, likely a Gengar, and uh, what Tyranitar ever stays against Breloom. That was my logic, but didn't work out for me this time. So, awkward start, awkward start, or at least even on Pokemon. But your Pokemon are for certain better than mine. I've got Vigoroth uh, Haunter. You have, you know, probably like actual Pokemon. In comes Chansey, though which can handle this Starmie decently, and at least Starmie is not going to rapid spin away any spikes, because I don't have any. I do not have any. I've got a Vigoroth win condition. And in comes a Registeel, which was unorthodox and unexpected. And I'm very thankful that this came in, because uh, this set was horrendous. And this horrendous set allowed me to claw my way back into the advantage, because look, it's got Thunderbolt, which is going to do like two damage to Metagross here. I checked for counter by clicking Meteor Mash, so it wouldn't do as much. If I Earthquaked, I could have almost died to counter, but with a Meteor Mash, got the attack raise randomly. Very lucky on my part, but doesn't appear to be any counter on this Registeel, so we're good to just uh, chip heal repeatedly and defeat it 1v1 while it's paralyzed and all that. Big damage there, of course. And I decided not to protect this time. I could have squeezed an extra le leftovers heal in, but I decided against it in case something wanted to come in, like a fire type. In his arrow, I went for protect. It turned out to be sub arrow though. And then I was sweating a little bit because this could still get me. I'm not very solid against this. And I clicked ancient power and then my uh, my concerns were eased a little bit. Ancient power on the Metagross. You apparently don't have ground coverage, which means I'm totally solid in this 1v1. You can continue to substitute. But I will mash every time. I might miss one of these, but so far we haven't. 
and I'm looking excellent. In comes a clay doll, and I mismashed that time, but I did not miss it in the more important circumstances, so I'm thankful for that. This is where I get Haunter in, and Haunter is about to do its best trick yet. The greatest trick Haunter ever pulled was convincing the world he didn't exist, and here's the destiny born to rule all. We fall to Psychic, and so do you. You're coming with me, down to the depths. Goodbye, clay doll. And I think we're home free. Good thing the opponent had a fake team, because that uh, Tyranitas stay almost ruined my entire run here. But no, as I mean, you can probably imagine we, we clean it up from here. I'll skip ahead. This Starmie slowly falls to some seismic tosses, and then Aerodactyl doesn't do much of anything from there. And now I have to devolve another Pokemon, and my choice is Metagross, who devolves into Metang. Our final fully evolved Pokemon that is preserving to the very end is Breloom, who I think Shroomish is the worst of them, so I didn't want to do Shroomish too early here. Metang is workable, but this is where things get very rough. And we go on to the next game. We now have a team of five devolved Pokemon, and a Blaziken lead is not what I want to see. I am forced out turn one, but surprisingly, there was no Fire Blast. I actually went for a Mark Punch saying, you know what, I'll sack Breloom here, because that Blaziken would have just ruined my whole world, but the enemy decided to exit. And I found out later why that is. The Blaziken is very slow. It's slower than Jolly Breloom. So, that play now makes sense in hindsight. At the time, I didn't get it. Now I remember. I try to get Vigoroth in on a full para. Didn't work out like that. I get Haunter in, of course, and here comes Tyranitar. And this is damn awkward. This could easily be Pursuit or something. I just exploded on it because I was frightened of it dancing or ruining my life. And I could scout it set by doing so. Haunter doing a service. And it appears to have Lumberry, so I can't Spore. I went for the Sky Uppercut, but in comes Metagross. And I can Spore right here, though. I can Spore right here. And this is good momentum where clawing our way back into the advantage. Even though we're down a Haunter, we spore on the Celebi. It, of course, has Natural Cure. But interestingly, it chooses to stay in, and this is the one time that Hidden Power Ghost gets some value. I've had a Hidden Power Ghost all this time, and it hasn't done much. I thought I needed an extra way to hit Gengar, but it comes in handy here against the Celebi, chipping it down significantly. Lacking Focus Punch has been a problem for me, but that actually forces Celebi out, and now I can spore again. So this Breloom is was a beautiful choice to not devolve it, because geez, this is carrying me like crazy. This Breloom is doing everything. It's carrying the team on its back. Figaroth thinks he's part of the team. I, I would disagree though. And here comes Blaziken, and based on the Sandstorm order, I can deduct, you know what, my Breloom's faster, and guess what? Sky Upper Cat Chaos. Breloom is saving my life. The last legs of this run of this challenge, Breloom is doing everything. Chansey can handle this Zapdos, of course, we go. But the crit thunderbolt. And now I'm so frightened that this is Trill, Drill Peck Zapdos and I'm going to fall here. But luckily, it wasn't. We get our heal. Chansey's healthy again. Celebi can now heal though, or Leech Seed or whatever. You can do various. I go for the T-Wave, hoping that Vigoroth can get in on a full paralysis and bulk up and start applying some pressure, maybe. And there it is. The full power finally came. I do indeed bulk up. In comes Metagross, and what happens now? We'll shock you. What happens will shock you. The Earthquake, and the, I'm pretty sure that crit mattered, folks. I'll be honest, Vigoroth is not that powerful. I'm pretty sure that crit was insanely significant. I think I would have lived in a Meteor Mash, though, I will say. And at least forced explosion, so good position regardless, but damn. Beautiful crit right there. Someone upstairs likes me. The full para raises an alarm bell for me, but I'm okay as long as we don't get the worst luck of all time and that heal. It's exactly what I need. Right here, I am in some slight shambles against DD Tar. Maybe I go to Breloom as an emergency. I'm pretty sure this is a fast DD Tar with Lumberry, and it's not bulk invested, so Mark Punch will, in fact, finish it off. I was damn right. I was damn right. And then that's when the forfeit comes in. We're getting so far with these fellows. Two of them didn't even need to hit the field. There was a Magnemite in the back. He didn't even come into the battle. So was a Matang. Breloom did all the work here. And now, finally... You're not going to believe the next battle. I, of course, devolve my Breloom into Shroomish. There's no other options left. You will not believe the next battle. Stay tuned, because this is a cinematic finish. The final battle begins, and I'm leading with Chansey now for lack of much better, and... Folks, Murkrow lead. What the heck is this Murkrow lead? I clicked counter, expecting a physical t attack to come down, but no, it was a Perish song. What, in the, what on earth is happening here? What's going on? The Murkrow Thunder Wave is my Metang entry points. And the entire world shakes to its very core. Uh, Murkrow perishes next turn. 
And then I I go to haunt her on a switch out, but Sneasel, Sneasel enters. Sneasel. What the heck? This guy's team is worse than mine, apparently. And he's not even doing a challenge, but... <laughs> but folks, okay. I'll, I'll take it. This is, like, poetic or something. We've got an equally horrendous team up against, but the Houndoom is a fairly real Pokemon, and Houndoom can cause issues for me. As it taunts, denying a Thunder Wave. A beautiful taunt by the dog there. Well played. I go for a toss. We chip down Sneasel a bit, but... Metang... I can't believe it. Metang Wall Sneasel. My Metang has a beautiful purpose in this battle of walling Sneasel. That crit, though, hurts a lot. That's a rough one. In comes... And comes who? The Sharpedo? I went for Earthquake thinking Houndoom came in. Guess what? Earthquake actually comes in handy here because Rough Skin did not proc. I protect and then... Agility? Agility, Sharpedo? Okay, I'm hoping Chansey can stomach this. It doesn't have HP fighting or anything crazy. I got full defense on Chansey at least. So... If it does like return, I think I'll be okay. That's my logic so far. Earthquake is only doing 28 and that's the physical coverage of choice. It's not going to be enough. This does get a little bit dubious, though, because my seismic tosses do contact damage. This 1v1 is very strange. My seismic tosses are doing contact damage. And I'm taking rough skin by 6%, but it, there's no sand up, so it's basically like sand. Because it's <laughs> chipping me exactly how much I leftovers heal every time. Uh, which is a bit odd. Has this ever happened in the history of Gen 3 OU? I don't think so. I don't think that a Chansey has ever done this particular 1v1 on a Sharpedo before, ever. This is the first in history. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm going to, of course, heal further. And you have actually agility to the point where you are faster than Chansey through paralysis and you crit me. So I am frightened a little bit because if I clicked toss there, I was toast. I would have fallen. Luckily, I healed. This time I got a Haunter on the Earthquake, which was a brilliant maneuver. Brilliant. I'm pretty sure Haunter is still faster post- all those agilities, you can't quite get that fast, Sharpedo. And in comes Murkrow, my, the bane of my existence once again. But Matang can chip heal against Murkrow until the cows come home. Folks, this is a cinematic final battle. I cannot believe it. I could, this is the ideal opponent. And it was still damn close, I gotta say. It was still damn close. <laughs> Chansey's in. But of course, Matang walls Sneasel. We've established this. Brick Break is doing 24. Full defense Matang, by the way, Impish Nature, for this very purpose. And here comes Umbreon. This um, th this is a good-ish po Pokemon, relatively speaking, compared to what else is in the battle. Umbreon is probably the best guy here. And I have, I'm have i forced to go to Shroomish. And it's Curse Umbreon. Now I'm worried about Curse Matten Pass or something. That could actually destroy me. Murkrow, I totally forgot this, has Insomnia. Folks, what's happening? Hidden Power, what even was that? Flying? You have Drill Pack anyway. Is there a moveset illegality I don't know about? Who knows, but... But okay. I get my leech seed off. We take huge chip on Shroomish. <laughs> a lot of first-time occurrences in this particular battle. A lot. It, it, it's Magnemite. Just saying hello. Just, just, just wanted to be part of it. Just wanted to say hello. Goes for the taunt. I, of course, astutely seismic toss. I play around it. I was not born yesterday. Fool me once, shame on me, all that. We toss, we toss, we toss. I was worried initially that this Houndoom might have beat up, which could really get me. But Chansey firmly handles Houndoom here. Firmly. Umbreon comes in. This damn Umbreon is the only thing that I'm worried about at this point in time. At this point in time, this Umbreon is all I'm worried about. But a Body Slam Para just destroys Shroomish's whole existence. And look at this. I proc Quick Claw. And I'm faster, but I get full Para that I can't move. That's salt in the wound of the likes of which I've never seen. For that poor Shroomish shoe. For the first time ever is being used on a team and... He almost did some useful stuff, but he's up against Murkrow Insomnia. And then he gets paralyzed. It's tragedy for Shroomish. But it's okay, Vigoroth comes in here. I'm just hoping I can like bulk up. I'm thinking you're baton passing to a fellow in the back. And then I'm realizing actually you got body slam. I think you're just cursing up to use this as the sweeper. And now I'm just praying I don't get paralyzed. Praying that I can 1v1 this with my Vigoroth. I'm so close to glory. I'm so close. Will it happen? I get the crit of all crits. That's revenge for what you did this Shroomish, you freak. How could you? This Houndoom is timid. It's faster than Vigoroth. I thought I would stay anyway. Maybe you 
do something. I don't even know what I was thinking there. But it didn't work out. And then you have Tyranitar, the best Pokemon in the game. And now I'm in a lot of trouble. I'm in a lot of trouble now. I go to Metang. I hope in a prayer, but you hurt your Dragon Dance. Even a Dragon Dance through Paralysis. Amazing that I got this Paralysis off, but I'm still in trouble. And I thought you would Earthquake. I go Haunter. And this is where time stands to a still. Look at what happens. Destiny Bond. Does he click the button? Yes, he does. Right here, I felt a sense of relief I've never felt before. I almost lost to this this particular opponent. And it was it was that Haunter was everything. It had to it had to do that right there. It had to get that that destiny bond at the exact moment. I was afraid is he gonna get a full parrot and see that I have it? Is something gonna get ruined? But no. No, everything worked out for Jim. Can Sneasel make something happen with full paras on my Metang? I think at this point Metang is as solid as the steel it's made of. Murkrow is going to fall as soon as it comes into that hefty sandstorm that he himself created with his Tyranitar. I did not bring the Tyranitar. Do you see a Tyranitar on my team? No. So your Murkrow fell by your own hand. A couple of tosses and this, this dog is about to hit the kennel and that bird is, is soon to follow and folks we're in the home stretch seismic toss that's a confirmed victory Mercury and hits the field sandstorm can you believe it i did it somehow i don't know how i got this opponent and i got that crit on the gambrion and i landed the destiny bond this was a truly bizarre experience but the stars aligned for me. The six devolved squad. Chansey, Matang, Haunter, Shroomish, Magnemite, and Vigoroth triumphs over adversity and got the coveted seven wins, zero losses record. I did it. Can you do the challenge yourself? Give it an attempt. See what you build with. There's many ways to approach this, I'm sure. Let's see if the folks at home can do it. Thank you.